Yep, so here we are, folks. We're at the Northwest Fundraiser. Um, I'm here with Nick Griffin, MEP, the second MEP I've spoken to today. Nick, it's been a fantastic day so far, hasn't it? It has indeed, yeah. Great atmosphere, great yeah. fun. Uh, and we've raised a lot of money. And more important than that, I'd say, we've got a lot of people really fired up to go out and start campaigning straight away. So it's just very simple things that they can be getting on with. We've given them all a pack uh, that, so they can go out and do their own thing, haven't we? Yep. But the, the, the key, as you know, is the postal votes. Uh, it's, I, I fear it's going to be a low turnout, uh, and in a low turnout, tiny numbers of votes make the difference. But so many people, 70% won't vote, uh, and I've lost count of the number of even our people who've told me shamefaced after an election, I forgot to vote, yeah. something cropped up, I couldn't vote, I'm really sorry. We could win or lose this election by 100 votes. Yeah. We've already got more of that out of here today. You know, with, it's really worth doing. Well, we've uh, we've done elections before when we've lost by one vote, and then somebody yep. comes to you in the street afterwards and says, "Oh, if I knew it was that close, I'd have voted for you." Yeah, she could knock the heads off quite literally. You could. But, Indeed, uh, so. You know, yeah, but you don't. You just you just potter on. Now, um, I alluded to it earlier. Spoke a little bit about uh, Tommy Robinson and the fact that you've been yeah. in this on, on the scene since you were a small boy. Uh, you've you've gained virtually nothing from it. You've suffered a lot. Um, you've been with us right through the whole cause, and you're sticking with us. Um, but I think that's very important. Robinson sold out his people. Yep. Do you have any comments to make on that? Well, you know, he came along with a, a little bit of style uh, and a lot of front uh, and convinced people he was you know, the saviour, the great white hope. Uh, there was an opinion poll just the other day, actually, who most speaks for England. Uh, and I was in there at 6%. He was there at 5%. I'll tell you what, over the next couple of weeks, he was shown on television yesterday, meekly taking his shoes off and walking into a mosque wearing his Union, Union Jack socks. I'm going to have the rest of that vote of his, because it's ours, actually. And, you know, he came along, he's been puffed up, hyped up by the Zionist backers, by the mass media, now by these fake moderate Muslims. Whether they're, they're certainly fake, they're either run by the British government, uh, or they're, in fact, hardliners wearing a soft mask. One way or another, yet again, he's a tool for someone else. I'm not used by anybody other than by the British National Party. That's always the way it's going to stay that way. Worryingly, worryingly I think, uh, for, for his supporters who've um, given their details over, I mean, that's, that's going to be a bit of a problem because they're now in the hands of uh, the establishment, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely so. Well, one of the things the Quilliam Foundation uh, has gone on record as saying is that it's taxpayer funded, therefore it should work with the police uh, to hand over details of people it regards as extremists. It regards everyone in the EDL who's not with them, Tommy and his uncle, uh, as extremists, so all those people are in the frame. Now, of course, it never had a formal membership structure, so there's certain people are saying, oh, well, there's no, there's no harm, no damage. But, of course, in the early days, Tommy and co. made a huge amount of money out of selling clothing. You can't send someone uh, a, uh, an Oxford ETL division jacket without having their name and address. Mm. So all their internet, de all their email details are there, all their Facebook details, they've got all of those. They've been harvesting email addresses and so on, and they've got the names and addresses of thousands of people. Anyone who's ever bought a badge, they've got them all. It's now all in the hands of the British state. And I'll tell you what, the vast, vast majority of people in the English Defence League are really decent mainly working class patriots, really decent people. It's absolutely, it's a tragedy that they've been conned and led down that blind alley. It's terrible that their details, when they've done nothing wrong, they have been committed to peaceful protest. Yet when you get two or three thousand lads together and then the police treat them like cattle and sheep and worse, of course they end up scuffling with the police and so on. It's the, it's the way that they're treated that's done that primarily. When they've, I've seen some of their smaller demos, when they've been treated decently, they're a bit boisterous, but they're peaceful. Those people committed to peaceful protest have been treated terribly badly, and they're now having their names and addresses and details given over to the British state. All I can say is actually, well, we did warn you, because it's now, what, three years since we produced the document showing exactly what Tommy Robinson was, exactly who he was working with and why. Uh, and if people didn't listen, in a way they got themselves to blame, but I still feel sorry for those huge numbers of people, particularly for the time they've wasted. All I can say is stop wasting time, 
by all means stay involved with one of the successor street protest groups, but let's face it, in the end, street protest is only part of the war. It's one arm in a peaceful protest militancy, and the other arm is political protest, it's electioneering, it's working in local communities for local people. It's all the things that you do, that I do, that our party does. And I'd say to those people, stop messing around and get involved with the British National Party. If you want to hit back at Tommy and his controllers for what they've done to you and your cause and they've broken your heart, then get involved with us because they'll hate that and because it makes a difference. And of course, the reason they need to get in touch with us and uh, get involved with us is because we're the only show in town, aren't we? We're absolutely the only show in town. Also, other reasons, the ones who are going to stay keep on going out on the streets, and we need, the movement needs that street presence. Um, Robinson and co, they led them like lambs to slaughter. They never once told them what to do if you get arrested. Mm. You know yourself that yeah. you can be out on uh, an activity, being absolutely legitimate, peaceful and all the rest of it, and if the police decide they're going to nick you, you will. And it's utterly irresponsible, and it was, for those for Tom Robinson and, his, and his, his backers to put those people into the frame where they could get arrested without giving them uh, the education and support they need you know, so that they can come out of that with their heads held high, without a criminal record, uh, in the, or in the best possible way. As you know, on our own website, we've got the, the guidebook on what to do if arrested. And certainly I want to see these people carrying on with their street protest, but I want all of them to do it forewarned and forearmed, having read, work with us, having read the document, having come to training sessions where we, t we need to teach people, if you're going to go out on these militant protests, if you're going to occupy roofs in protest against grooming or whatever, fantastic, good on you, we'll provide the political support and we've also got to provide the, the practical support to minimise their chances of being arrested or jailed or whatever. And it's time for the, the street protest movement and the political movement to come together rather more and work together in what is definitely a common cause. And for anybody watching this, of course, uh, we do have that's a permanent fixture on our website. Indeed. The, uh, the booklet, so it's, it's always there on the right hand yep. side. So anybody can have a look at that at any point in time. They, they can indeed. Excellent. Well, listen, Nick, it's been a fantastic day today. Um, we're moving on from here. We're going for a black tie dinner. We are. Not too bad for uh, people who shouldn't even exist. So uh, we've had a busy day. We're going to have a busy <laughs> evening and uh, hopefully everything will go nicely. Yeah, and of course, we do exist. We're here, we've been talking a lot about street campaigning, but today we've made a huge step also to ensuring that we're going to be in with a really big campaign at the political level, you know, fighting elections. We're in this to win this seat. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a really, really good chance. The campaign we've been lining up and working with several people new in the background, it's things we're not announcing yet. In fact, a lot of the things, some of the things we're going to be doing, our opponents won't even know we've done them. Mm -hmm. But uh, I hope very much next year, as a consequence, after this election, they'll be scratching their heads thinking, how the hell did Nick Griffin and the British National Party win that seat back? Because we've got every chance of doing so. Excellent. Listen, thank you very much, Nick. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Adam. Cheers.